back from Reykjavik, Iceland. Tom Harbin here with you, and uh, I am I'm very pleased and honored to have with me in the studio. And I, I, I have mangled every Icelandic name, and I know I'm, I'm Bergita uh, Jonsdotter. Yeah, Bergita? yeah, it's pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. good. Pretty, yeah, pretty close. Yeah. I didn't win the competition for the most mangled name. No, no. <laughs> I think they did that in the the Bradley Manning pre-trials. Yes, well, and that's very interesting. Your name was used in the Bradley Manning pre-trials. They went because the United States State Department hacked your Twitter. You are a member of Parliament in the government here in Iceland, and our State Department hacked your Twitter account. What what's going on? Well, um, I I helped co-produce a video that became world famous uh, called Collateral Murder that WikiLeaks put WikiLeaks on the map in. Mm. 2010 and uh, I put my name there because I was on the list because I was very proud to uh, share this video which uh, I felt was a way to lend the voice to the voiceless because this was not a single incident this happens every day in Iraq and um, I also worked um, as a spokesperson for this video for WikiLeaks and for WikiLeaks uh, maybe for a week mm -hmm. um, so I got intimately connected with WikiLeaks and the uh, US authorities are on a crusade uh, on everybody that's ever supported WikiLeaks. But I've also found out through the pre-trials uh, on Bradley Manning, whom uh, I had never heard of uh, prior to his arrest. And his, the way he's been treated is absolutely disgraceful. Yes. Uh, he's been in prison for 19 months and he finally got his pre-trials the day before his 24th birthday in December and because of this the Department of Justice sent out uh, some form of subpoenas to Twitter asking Twitter to release all my backend uh, personal information to them without my knowledge uh, within three days <laughs> and to Twitter's credit they actually took it to court and unsealed it so I could have a chance to defend myself Wow. Uh, and um, not only at the time when this happened, I was uh, not only a member of the Icelandic Parliament, but I was also a part of the Foreign Affairs Committee, and I'm still uh, a member of the NATO Parliamentary Assembly. Uh, but it's a very serious breach, uh, a diplomatic breach, uh, and they are complaining at the same time that the cables were released, uh, and I can understand that, but the same has to apply to everybody. If they want somebody to honor their diplomatic immunity, they have to do the same. Or, or even honor human integrity. I mean, mm. the, 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 the individuality. But it, yeah, sorry, so just so add to it mm. uh, that the International Parliamentary Union consider this to be so serious that they had the Human Rights Committee go over this incident and uh, they're making a special report on it and they made a resolution um, a couple of months ago where they seriously criticized US authorities for doing this <laughs> and this organization has nearly all nations in the world in it except the United States and it's been around since 1885 and I just found out that the United States government usually don't participate in international work on this scale unless they're veto yes. so in this union everybody has the same sort of each each country has one vote yeah now you you also are um, one of the one of the uh, parents, I guess, to say, of or or perhaps the, the the sole one of the Icelandic Modern Media Initiative. This thing that you and did this come out of your being the the victim of the State Department or out of your exposure to the 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 no this was prior with uh, WikiLeaks or? this was prior and this was the beginning of my work with WikiLeaks and other uh, individuals and organizations mm -hmm. that were concerned about the state of freedom of information and press. Um, and uh, expression and right. speech. So what is the Icelandic Modern Media Initiative? Uh, it is a, um, a set of law changes or new laws, 10 to be precise, uh, in four different ministries that I managed to, I, I was the chief sponsor of it, mm -hmm. uh, and my, my task was to get it through the parliament. Then, to my incredible surprise, because it has very uh, big aims in it, uh, I passed it through the parliament with unanimous vote, and I don't think that's ever happened for from such a small minority wow. party. And uh, so the government supported it, the prime minister voted for it, and, and all the other uh, ministers. And uh, currently, like, it, it deals with laws like, you know, to have the best possible whistleblowing legislation in the world, the best source protection laws. Um, 
uh, modernized Freedom of Information Act, uh, dealing with libel, tourism, uh, and it goes on and on. Uh, mm -hmm. People can have a look at it if they go to immi.is, uh, and it's okay. in English, the proposal. immi.is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and, um, but it came as a result also of, like, what WikiLeaks had figured out how to keep stuff up, no, ma no matter what, mm -hmm. what sort of attacks they were under. And we wanted to figure out ways to put that, like, pull together all the best laws from around the world to ensure the, the, the best possible laws for freedom of information, expression and speech. Mm -hmm. And um, not for WikiLeaks, but for all the others that didn't have the same sure. uh, hands-on experience as they did. And and that's uh, remarkable. The do you do you see any uh, any efforts or any initiatives? You you mentioned earlier before we were on the air about SOPA in the United States. This this uh, Internet Piracy Act, um, in quotes, you know this uh, this attempt by largely a few entertainment companies to lock down the internet. Mm. I would say I, obviously they they would disagree with that language. But um, as a member of 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 the, the NATO Parliament, as a member of the European or of the Icelandic Parliament, and as the author of these um, this this legislation and these ideas, what's your take on what's going on in the United States and how that's going to affect Iceland and other countries if we go down the road of you know the SOPA in the House, Protect IP in the Senate, these these kinds of things. Mm. Well, you know, in many ways, it sort of reminds me, I have worked a lot for Tibet, Tibetan uh, issues as well, mm -hmm. uh, and I have followed a lot the development in uh, China, for example, mm -hmm. and it looks to me like if you pass this, uh, the SOPA, mm -hmm. you will become just like China when it comes to, you know, really poor uh, legislation for freedom of information. And this is, well, it all started with the Patriot Act. Mm. And and so I think the the next big task for the Occupy movements and all these movements that are working for democratic for reform is to um, uh, create the you know re remove the the patriotic patriotic act mm -hmm. uh, to remove it uh, because it has destroyed your First Amendment. Uh, you can't really practice. There is so much uh, practice uh, freedom of speech because yeah. there is so much uh, self censorship, mm -hmm. and um, I think that. Uh, if you pass SOPA, I have been following it a little bit through the EFF, mm -hmm. uh, and e the EFF Electronic Freedom uh, Foundation. Yeah, uh, brilliant people. They yes. they are the ones that are um, uh, have been you know the legal team for me, uh, and also the ACLU. Mm -hmm. uh, so they've actually been uh, working with me pro bono, and thus I've been following everything that they are doing. And I think that if people really want to know what SOPA is all about, that they should really go to the website. Yeah. But we also have dangerous elements in Europe. We have uh, ACTA, which is uh, uh, much broader uh, and also deals with um, uh, medicine and uh, patents mm -hmm. on medical stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but the trend is worrying, and we really need to open our, our eyes up to the simple fact that we don't have the same uh, legal rights online as we have offline. We're simply consumers there. Is this an area where the uh, conservative parties, libertarian parties, and progressive parties, the left and the right, might meet or do meet here in Iceland? Or is this are these uh, civil liberty questions still largely the province of the left? No, it's still, uh, you know, because the, the right-wing people in Iceland believe in the uh, right for privacy of individuals, mm -hmm. for example, and the right for expression. So I do think that uh, in Iceland we don't have such a strong division as you have in the States, yeah. because you have such really strong extremes. Yeah, um, that's great. It's uh, uh, Birgitta, John's daughter, thank you so much.